You're not a real gangster if they don't make a movie about you and the star who plays you is Tom Hardy. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> you hear about like torture and shit like on movies, but bro, can you, I can't even imagine actually doing that to a human, bro. Like, you gotta be one sick mother what is up guys welcome back to a brand new reaction and today we're watching top 10 infamous british gangsters as you can see i'm kind of a, a gangster expert i have a fictional cuban gangster up on my wall <laughs> so you know i've been around some gangsters in my life and uh i've never met any british gangsters so th this should be interesting <laughs> i'm kidding i don't even really know what a gangster is <laughs> that's why we're here damn it we're here to learn so if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button we're trying to hit 100k once we do i'm getting a uk theme tattoo drop a like on the video if you want to see more gangster reactions we can make it happen <laughs> second channel link down in the description now let's get into it say hello to my little friend welcome to watch mojo uk and what i tell you what i tell you <laughs> how you gonna Open a British gangster video with a Cuban gangster. <laughs> Today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 infamous British gangsters. And he's, he's just fighting. Yeah, that dude just looks scary. Fighting, fighting, fighting. Number 10, Lenny McLean. Frequently dubbed the hardest man in Britain, McLean was known to most people simply as the governor. What are you gonna pay? <laughs> Barry makes sure the administrative side of the business runs harmoniously. While his gangster credentials aren't as prominent as some, he did become Britain's most famous bare-knuckle street fighter, and reportedly one of the best. Throughout his career, McLean said to have fought in almost 4,000 matches, and to have won most of them. I used to mind. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you know how scary it would be to meet a man that goes by the governor, who's been in 4,000 street fights and won most of them? Bro! Cheese and rice, bro. That is wild. <laughs> Whoa. The toughest clubs in Britain, all over the country. I had about 20,000 bar and brawls. An important figure in the East End as a bouncer, bodyguard, and enforcer, he often associated with people such as the Cree Twins and Charles Bronson. Yeah, that sounds, the, a bouncer sounds like the perfect job for him. Life, he worked as an actor. I suggest you get those guns. Quick! Huh. Number nine, Thomas McGraw. Born in Glasgow, Tam the Licensee McGraw's criminal career started off with burglary and armed robbery. First off, I feel, like, I feel like you're on a different level of badass when everybody knows that you have a nickname. Like, bro, I need a nickname. Like, bro, JT the Hacksaw Kelly. <laughs> Why Hacksaw? I don't know. <laughs> Eventually became one of the most wanted men in Scotland. In the 1980s, after somehow avoiding a stint in prison after a failed robbery, he began to expand his criminal empire by selling heroin and purchasing numerous clubs and pubs. Huh. Heroin and pubs. The disrespect. He was one of the key figures. You could have just hit him and beat his ass with his toupee still on. Those ice cream wars, where violent confrontations become commonplace among criminals using ice cream vans as a front for drug sales. What? Charles Bronson. With his taste of fighting him. guards and inmates alike, Charles Bronson became known as Britain's most violent prisoner and is one of British crime's most notorious figures. Yeah. They said, I'm bigger than my name. Born Michael Peterson. Oh, wait, wait. Bronson wait, wait. began as a petty criminal and was first imprisoned for armed robbery. That's a, did, they, did they make a movie about him? I feel like that's why I know that name. Prison was finally yeah, a place Bronson. where I could sharpen my tool. Upon his yeah, release I think in I've 97, he entered the world of bare knuckle boxing, but his fighting career was fairly short lived. These, is, these damn dudes always come back to just punching somebody, don't they? <laughs> later, he was in jail again. Out again in 92, he was arrested a third time for conspiracy to rob and has never been freed since. Damn. Would you like a cup of tea too, mate? Number yeah, I've seven, seen that before. Freddie Foreman. He's best known as Brown Bread Fred, or the godfather of British crime, Brown as many publications Bread have come to refer to him. But Foreman says he's nothing like Marlon Brando. Oh, well, I, I will do. say, JT Hacksaw Kelly sounds a lot more badass than Brown Bread Fred. <laughs> make money so we could live a decent life. One of the East End gangster scene's most feared figures, he was close to the infamous Cray Twins and was implicated in numerous murders and other criminal activities. When she pulled the trigger, you never know what's going to happen. Hey, you know, that man, you know that man's a badass when they got the hair that just goes straight up, bro? Is it? Look at it. It looks like damn Cheetah Pit. <laughs> you know, bro, they just go straight up. Yeah, bro, he's been through some shit. <laughs> Though never actually convicted of killing anybody, he was sentenced to 10 years in prison for disposing of the body of Jack the Hat McVitie, and later in relation to 1983's Shoreditch Secure 
Security Express robbery. I feel like if when my time's up, uh, I've, at least I've, I've had an eventful life, if nothing else. Number six, Jeez. Tommy Comerford. The hometown of the Beatles has had its share of shady characters. This includes one of the first big business criminals to establish in England the kind of international drug trafficking network that you perhaps usually link to a mob overseas. Drug baron Tommy Tucker Comerford was instrumental in forming the first serious drug dealing cartel in Britain, what which the made the Liverpool Mafia the richest in the country. His first stint in jail came after a bank robbery, and during his long criminal career, he was sentenced to more than 34 years behind bars. Bro. Number five, Desmond That's and wild. Dominic Noonan. These two brothers were the head of one of Manchester's most infamous and ruthless gangs, which by the late 1990s had become one of the most notorious crime families in the whole of Britain. Yeah, well, they, they, they look scary. They don't do anything nice, but you know, we, 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 do look after, we do look after each other. We look after our friend. Involved in uh, drug trafficking. Have y'all seen the movie, uh... Damn, what is that movie called? It got Mark Wahlberg in it. Hold on. Four Brothers, but Mark Wahlberg. That's what these guys remind me of, Four Brothers. If y'all haven't watched that, bro, go watch it. It's a badass movie. Fucking nightlife security and armed robbery, the Noonan's reign over Manchester's underworld lasted over 20 years. Jeez. My it's run by police, by night, it's run by gangsters. Manchester is where I was born, where I live, and where I'll die. Look at this. Okay, okay. When you look at this guy, if you didn't tell me he was an infamous gangster, I'd be like, yeah, he... Probably works in like the IT department of some big business, you know. Probably, you know, just runs, grabs coffee, gets some printer paper. <laughs> like, like, he just looks like your normal old guy, but no, he's, he's probably killed somebody. <laughs> During that time, they were also suspected of being responsible for more than 25 murders. Desmond was stabbed in 2005 and died of his wounds, while Dominic is currently serving 22 years in prison for arson, blackmail, and sex offenses. Shut up, I'll, I'll beat you up in a minute. Number four. Frankie Fraser. One of the most recognizable faces in modern British crime, mad Frankie Fraser was a guy you didn't want to cross. The police say I've killed 40 people, not 41. If they'd have said 41, I'd have really been upset. I hate odd numbers. And the nickname <laughs> is not just for show. He was actually certified insane during a short prison stint after World War II, a conflict he'd managed not to take part in by deserting. Jeez. Fraser eventually became an enforcer for the Richardson Gang during the 60s and was reportedly involved in numerous episodes of torture and murder. So I allegedly pulled a guy's teeth out with pliers. I only wished it had been true. His violence followed him in prison, where he would often start fights with other inmates and guards. That is where I slung Eric Mason out with an axe in his head. Number three, the Gun Brothers. Yeah, bro. Yeah, when I think gangster, bro, that, that's the dude that pops up. Like, older gangsters, that's what I feel like they look like and how they act. That's wild, bro. That's that's scary for real. Heads of the Bestwood Cartel, named after the Bestwood Estate in Nottingham, where they set up their criminal enterprise, brothers David and Colin Gunn became the city's foremost gang lords. I mean, when you're 90s. born with the name Gun, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just how it is. Nineties, the brothers had risen through the ranks from petty criminals to underworld figures, a rise largely unchallenged by the city's other criminals. Drug trafficking, protection rackets, corruption, and murder became commonplace under their watch. So much so that the city earned the nickname of Shottingham. As their empire grew and drugs flowed in, Colin started becoming more and more Shottingham. Gun brothers, gun shot, it, it's starting to come together. On <laughs> violent and volatile, as steroids and cocaine use heightened his worst impulses. Under his watch, even innocence would pay the price of his crimes. Number oh, two. Oh yeah, that, that, yeah, that one little hoop earring, bro, yeah, that's gangster. <laughs> Richardson brothers. Charlie and Eddie Richardson were the leaders of what many still consider the most sadistic and ruthless gang in Britain, the Richardson Gang. They were often simply referred to as the Torture Gang due to their preferred way of settling scores and intimidating rivals and transgressors. After holding mock trials, their victims could be subject to electric shocks, teeth pulling using pliers, toe cutting or even being nailed to the floor. The Richardsons controlled South London but ended up in a feud with the craze that lasted into the mid-60s. Bro, like, you hear about like torture and shit like on movies, but bro, can you, I can't even imagine actually doing that to a human bro like you gotta be one sick mother <laughs> bro that's wild they were, they were frighteners really vicious people number one that's crazy the cray twins uh -oh. 
The most infamous gangsters to ever call London home, Ronnie and Reggie Cray, were the most prominent criminals in the city's East End over the 1950s and 60s. That's how, that's how you know they were some for real, like, badass gangsters. When they make a movie and Tom Hardy plays them, bro. <laughs> You're not a real gangster if they don't make a movie about you and the star who plays you is Tom Hardy. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> That's how you know you're legit right there. Wow, no, 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 no. <laughs> Armed robbery, hijacking, murder, and general violence were only some of the brothers' specialities while heads of their own gang, The Firm. As owners of several nightclubs in the 60s, they became part of the swinging London scene and gained a certain amount of celebrity, even appearing on national television. But they were finally arrested in 1968 and essentially spent the rest of their lives in prison. Jeez. Now before we start, I've got a little joke for you. In love Double you. hammer? Paranoid schizophrenic who walks into a bar. What did I learn? Nightclubs, heroin, and bare knuckle fighting. It's all you need to be a gangster. <laughs> and Tom Hardy to play you in the movie. <laughs> but alright guys, that is going to do it for the top 10 infamous British gangsters. If y'all want to see more reactions like this, if you want to see more gangster reactions, like I said, we'll make it happen. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure I go out today. Spread love, spread kindness, do something nice to somebody today. I love you guys so much, I really do. J2 Reaction, I'm out. Peace.